Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. So, yeah, the, 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 so the next workout, this was one of the workouts I thought I was most impressed with Amy on, even though she was like, oh, I wish I did better. Mm. Uh, just because of like her strengths and weaknesses. Yep. This one was called Sudden Impact. Six minute ladder. I'm going to have the gym do this. Not everyone's going to love it, but you can scale the weight, obviously, if you want to. But it's an AMRAP for six, six minutes. One, two. So it's a ladder. One, two, three, four, five, six, blah, blah, blah. Right. Keep adding one rep every time. One wall walk and then a deadlift. All right. Deadlift weight was 315 for guys, 225 for ladies. So obviously it's pretty heavy. And then they started reducing the weight at 45, actually. It went to 275, 205. And then let's talk about this next. I'm going to talk about the workout. They took out this workout for the older age groups. So we'll talk about that after. I want to get Amy's thoughts on it. Um, we did predict that heavy pulling would be paired with something up inverted. Up yeah. And down. Yeah. Perfect and prediction. I actually kind of like this more than handstand pushups mm. just because it's more like active. Like yeah. you can always do it. You don't, you can always do a wall walk, right? You strict handstands, you get to failure. What are your thoughts, Amy? I mean, I like the workout. I just didn't, I don't think I was prepared for how fast it was going to go mm. and it went really fast yep. i remember looking and being like i am chasing everybody and i cannot <laughs> catch up yeah so I, I definitely struggled on this one more than i more than i thought i would actually i didn't think i would struggle as much as i did mm -hmm. but well, um, do you have the standings what place did she come in on this? 15th. 15th i i thought this was going to be like i didn't say it i thought this was going to be amy's like worst event other than the last two yeah like in the 20s i thought this was like oh man like i hope she just because yeah the range of motion, the distance her bar has to travel. It's a heavy barbell, but it's not. And it felt really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't something that like crushes someone that can't do a deadlift. Like you'll right. see when you do this workout, I think more people think the workout is about the barbell. It's more about the wall walks. Yeah. I would say three to one. Yeah. Surprising. I really yeah. think that when you guys do this, you're like, oh man, that's a heavy barbell, whatever. Like it's, you're going to get to wall walk failure. And I thought that's still something that we're working on with her, like big picture. And when she's like, when he came in 15th, I was like, honestly, that's like a 40 points more than I thought you were going to be able to get in that workout. The, the, the wall walk spacing there, like you were really tight. We we're really next to each other. I actually was kicking guy. We were kicking each other left to right. Mm. And then the barbells were really tight to each other too. This is one thing where logistically it's hard to do this kind of workout, a lot of back and forth, because the ideal format of this workout is that everyone is equal distance from wall to barbell. But because it was so small in there, like you were doing deadlifts, like mm -hmm. you would hinge and feel like someone's, you know, face is in your butt, you know, yeah. like, like there, I was deadlifting with someone that was right in front of me. And as I was hinging, I was probably a foot away from his ass at, at the bottom. But if you stagger the barbells, now you have people you're traveling yeah. further distance. So I thought that was a little, it was tough. I don't really have a suggestion on how to better do that in that space other than maybe that workout because I actually saw some guys too at the top of their deadlift. They were almost throwing the bar a little bit mm. as they dropped their last oh, rep. Yeah. So it would bounce. Oh. So by the end of the workout. So it was closer to the wall. Uh, the end, you know, and you were running. You were running from deadlift to wall walk. Yeah. Like it was that kind of quickness. So I thought the fitness test was great. Logistically in that space, I think that's one reason why they might want a bigger space down the road or just maybe kind of change that workout up or somehow p put that in the other room because that one actually would be kind of fun to watch on a main floor yeah it's fast it's aggressive you can roll the bar forward every round you get and there's more space out there but yeah. any other thoughts on that one no i mean it's just funny because they re kind of re like really put into which way you're going to be facing like mm -hmm. set up told us probably five times yeah. beforehand <laughs> i go out to do my first deadlift and they're like you're going the wrong way. <laughs> I was the only one oh, facing oh, really? the wrong way <laughs> after they had told me five times which way to face. So, I mean, I fixed it, obviously, the second time I went to the barbell. Did they no rep you? No. Okay, that's no, good. No, but I did get no rep on a couple wall walks, I, which, I is, no on which was brutal. Mm. It is brutal. Mm. Because is that's one, a lot of time. It, and it's one of a the- A lot of energy. You're so right. Is yeah. it from getting not close enough to the wall or coming down off the wall? I- don't even still didn't I didn't really know what she what I was no rep for. Uh -huh. I think it was my one hand. I bet that was something. Uh -huh. And then I moved a foot, I think, before 
my one hand moved. I yeah. think it was something like that. It's a brutal that yeah. standard yeah. stuff. I got no rep on my set of four, on um, my set of three, yeah. and it's amazing how much it sets you back. Yeah. I think it's one of the worst movements to get no rep on. Oh. So I would tell anyone that if you're competing and that's ever in a workout, go like a quarter second slower to make sure you get the rep. Because unless it's at the end of the workout, mm -hmm. because it was, it's, it's a lot of energy, it's time and mentally it, it, in a workout like that where you know, reps are so close to each other. Yeah. It's, it was tough. I didn't get my hand back on one of them too. Because I had this like rhythm, like step, 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 yep. step, step. Like I'm not even looking at the line. I'm just assuming mm -hmm. I'm going to get there. And one of them, I just didn't. And uh, yeah, it, it, it crushed me mentally. Yeah. You did this workout after you were cramping. Yeah. How did it feel? You did 15th as well. Yeah, no cramping, but definitely dizzy every mm. time I got up from the wall walk. And you're uh -huh. upside down. Yeah. I see. And still like <clears throat> mentally, I think I was still kind of like, like a little upset. Probably could have done a better job of like, all right, get over it. Mm. Now you're competing. Mm. But like it was like the guy, the medic told me he was like two minutes in you're going to know if you're okay or not. Mm. And I remember looking at the clock at two minutes and I'm like, I am not okay. Mm. Like just like hobbling to the barbell, mm -hmm. touch and go deadlift the entire time. Mm -hmm. It's a e good movement for me, easy movement. But the, uh, the, the transition in that workout, like I just couldn't go fat because the, when I was really at my worst state, the most dizzy I got was when I would go up right away and start walking. Mm. You have to like stand up, wait five seconds and start walking. So every time I got up from the wall wall, mm -hmm. you know, you're it's just like lumbering over mm -hmm. there. So yeah, that was like, that was an event when I saw it, I'm like, I'm going to crush that, you know? And it didn't, I was like, fuck, you know? Mm -hmm. Which makes it more frustrating yes, because you it know does. it was something that you could have done really yeah. well at. I want to do that one again. At a hundred percent. It's mm -hmm. on my list. Yeah. All right. So the next Not one. Not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> you pick one, I'll pick one. And then we can yeah, do them next each other. <laughs> The next one, really cool workout. This was the first broadcast event. So they broadcasted on the YouTube channel Saturday and Sunday. And this was one of them. At first, I was like, man, I don't know if this is fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Is it? And I, I think you can make the case it's not fun to watch, but it is really good classic CrossFit. And it is not what you think it is. You know, like there's a couple sneaky things here that, you know, your, your novice CrossFitter might not get until they actually watch. So the workout was this, okay? 90 GHD sit-ups. 12 rope climbs, 150 wall balls, all right? But it was a 12-minute cap. And so, you know, the volume looks like it's high, and it is high. This is definitely a workout where I saw, I don't know if Amy remembers this. I'm like, this one's going to F people up. Yeah. Like, we're going to be really sore from this. Yep. Mm -hmm. But nobody did 150 wall balls because nobody finished. Mm -hmm. I think a few people Nobody got, did, right? Not in all divisions. Yeah. So I heard on Savan's podcast that Rich supposedly finished, tested this, and he did it in 11 minutes. Right. And like that is like just mathematically, I feel like that's as fast as anyone can do it. You know, just like how long 90 HD, 90 JHDs in three minutes, that's fast. Rope climbs in three minutes, that's really fast. Karen in six minutes, five, six minutes, unbroken basically, mm -hmm. if you're going to do it that fast. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's cool that he yeah, has a Rich Froning fan that he did the workout mm -hmm. and he tested it and like how close can you get to him kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, what were your thoughts on this, Amy? The GHDs weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be in it. Like in the GHD movement, it was going to the rope. Like the moment I got off and started walking, I was like, <laughs> I'm there, tried. There, yep, yeah. there we go. Yeah. There, that's what it is. Yeah. The core was fried um, at that point. Yeah, it was my hip flexors. Hip flexors were yeah, fried. Yeah, it was 100% my hip flexors. So that was probably the hardest part. Hip flexors getting onto the rope. Yep. So, I, cu I couldn't pick my legs up. So there you go. Oh, I'm yeah. glad you said that. Yeah. The, the programming trap on this workout, <clears throat> and if you're advanced with programming and you want to, you, you can find ways to do stuff like this, right? It's a trap where you can blow the 90 JCs out. Cool. Good for you. Got to walk down. They maybe said your name on the broadcast. Awesome, right? Now you can't do the rope climbs. Yeah. <laughs> because a huge part of rope climbs is using your hip flexors to pick up your knees as high as you can, grab the rope with your feet, reach up. And Amy is, she's pretty good at rope climbs when she's fresh. And I, we've trained them a lot. She's tall, she's jump, but she's also just really good at pulling her mm -hmm. body weight. She's very strong for her body weight. And, and I was like really excited for her for on this workout because the greatest movement, I don't think there's a person at that entire competition, all divisions that's better than her at wall balls. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if she could just get through those rope climbs, mm -hmm. she's going to crush the wall balls. And she did, but that workout, 
everyone views 90 GHGs, it's almost like they look past the rope climb. Mm -hmm. But when you're at that failure with the core and hip flexors, mm -hmm. you're almost like completely screwed. Yeah. And you're using more energy to get up there, which gives you less time at the wall balls, less energy at the wall balls. So I just thought it was like a really well-designed workout that from the first look at it, you're saying, man, that is borderline irresponsible. But I thought it was a great test of fitness. Yeah. Sam, what were your thoughts on this? But did you watch the broadcast? I did. This okay. one I watched, it reminded me of the quarterfinal workout where there were a bazillion GHDs and rope climbs. And I really- and pistols. Vi yeah, pistols. I really vividly remember not being able to do a rope climb. Like how the hell, can I, I'm taking, you should take like, for me, maybe four poles to get up there. And yeah. I was taking like six, yeah. seven, because I just couldn't get my legs yep. to move up on the rope to to stretch out right and and i remember thinking at the time this is so sneaky bad because you didn't realize it until you actually did that workout yeah then when i watched you guys and i saw amy and i saw you're when you're cheering for someone you're literally like yelling at the screen like <laughs> yeah you <laughs> can do it right? yeah. yeah you can do it and then yeah. finally when you got through the 12 rope climbs because you were on pace with everyone else rope climb smoked you but yeah. then when you got to the how, wall balls. How many wall balls did you do? You, sh you know, she passed like a bazillion competitors because you just saw the fire in her eyes and yep. she was like just moving on those wall balls. And yep. that's she, where her grit helps out. Yeah, we talked about this as an athlete. She has a lot of grit. Absolutely. I remember walking from the rope to the wall balls being like. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is it. Because yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I was yelling at the screen like, if you just get to the wall just balls, you're going to be okay. Well, I was getting actually frustrated on the ropes because I was like, I just need to get to the wall right. balls. Yeah. I know no How matter did what. How you do in a row right away? Well, my, is this, is this I want to say like 60. Yeah, someone said it was 60. I was like, oh my God. It was God. 60 something. At one point, I, I remember catching the ball and like I Fumbling it. tipped forward and then that kind of like threw me off. Yeah. And then I didn't even mean mentally i was like i'm not gonna drop it my arm my my elbows were so shot that yeah. i just dropped it yeah yeah i bet that was partial rope climb but also still left over from the dumbbell snatch yeah. workout right. yeah you just got beat up in there so yeah. you made so yeah. much progress on that you finished sixth which was great awesome and i knew that dave on wall balls i remember last year on that wall ball workout you also passed a bazillion people for going unbroken right on wall balls and i thought the same thing i was like if she he gets to the wall balls he's yeah. going to make a lot of gains on people yeah what i just appreciate though as an athlete is to sit there mentally and grind out wall balls after all that the amount of pain that you're going through mentally yeah. is insane it is. and and that's where you sort of see where athletes are and even if you don't have it you can appreciate it in others when they just will go to that pain cave and just go super deep yeah that's what that karen was at the end it was a big fu like how far into the pain cave can you go yeah. and you saw a lot of athletes they were like 10 drop yep you know eight drop you could yeah. see people get defeated on walls. oh my gosh you yeah. could see that they didn't want to go there yeah and when you see people who are like screw this i'm just going to keep going with it yeah you're like whoa i know how like that's amazing yeah and, and mind you, like I did this one, I think it was 8.30 at night. You know, like you're just like, at some point you start getting sleepy. Yeah. You know, you're just, you're just tired. And like it had no impact on the workout, but it, it's, that's another angle to it that when you're under some sort of state of mind like that, whether it's sleepy, you're injured, you're overly sore, it usually comes like in those last two, three minutes where like, and that I see that at the gym as a coach all the time. Like if you just don't have the full mindset ready, it's like, that's the kind of movement that you just, it just crushes you. It says one of the easiest things we did all weekend, movement wise. Mm -hmm. It's a wall ball, all right. But it's still one of the hardest to do mentally. Sometimes the most basic things in CrossFit to do are the are the hardest. We always say you can always do one more wall ball. Yep. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like maybe you can. I don't every, know. Every now and then you'll hit that actual failure. Like I got interrupted a few times. Like I missed the target. At that point, like you know, it was shifting a lot in my squat. Like I was basically mm. doing everything on my right leg, and I did get no ready. A, a couple warnings, I think. My coach was like the ref. Sorry, the judge was saying, yo, squat, like watch. So I was really trying to like mm. hinge a little bit onto that right leg. And, but the guys next to me, it's funny when you do get no rep, you stop. Like, mm. it, like it's mm. almost, it's like mentally you get defeated, like mm -hmm. on a wall walk. And like, I remember the guy next to me, he got no rep again for same thing, not hitting the target or maybe not squatting. And this, he was fine. But the second he got no rep, it does. It like, plays that like, 
Did he drop it? Yep. Every yeah. time. Every time he got on rats, he stopped. Yeah. And I'm like, man, like, I wonder if, if that's like something you can work on mentally as an athlete and prep yourself for. When you get no rep, just keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. During uh, a workout, just have someone stand next to you and no yeah. rep you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Don't worry. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, thoughts on this being a live stream event? I, I've been going back and forth in my head a little bit yeah. on this. Like, should they stream mm -hmm. event like this? You're just watching this kind of like slow transition, like not a lot of transition workout for, I don't know, eight, 10 hours. I mean, I had skin in the game watching you guys, so right. I enjoyed it. And right. I also s understood that the money was in the wall balls. But you're right. Watching someone do a bunch of people do 90 GHDs, right. 12 rope climbs, some of them just kind of standing there like, mm, like this, you know, shaking out their arms, yeah. like walking around, like yeah. chalking up some more, you know, to do the, the rope climbs. N not super exciting. I right. agree. I also think it's hard for the broadcast to basically just talk about the same workout over mm -hmm. and over. It, it was, you know, I was going to comment on that. I uh, Kudos to Sean Woodland and uh, Annie Sakamoto for going through. I know people were saying, they're saying the same things over and over again for every heat. But on the other hand. It's the same thing over every, and over again. For every heat. Yeah. So what are you going to do? <laughs> I do feel, you know, when they had Cole Sager on for a little while, he actually provided some awesome color commentary because he thought he talked a little bit about how he would approach it or or, or that's how, cool how this feels yeah and i will say the broadcast was much better this year than it was last year okay i do feel the the rep counters make such a big difference that in, was in yeah. terms of professionalism i would love to know how they do that you know i hope that it's not just 16 people standing there well, there's like, only eight right? i know eight people every time but i'm like trying to think i'm not very tech but is there an algorithm that can like do i don't that think so i think you have manual human counters. people like yeah. sitting there looking and counting and That's hitting so cool. a button every a time people. which is ama amazing to me that they have that kind of manpower kudos again to ma'am for for setting that up right but yeah i don't know you know the live stream for these is really tough especially when you go through like 16 heats yeah and I, granted you're not watching all 16 usually i, I did usually the two, last day you did yeah. and it was just it is mind numbing it's tough yeah. and you know i know savant says you should watch the 60 to 65 or the older groups and all that i don't know i i, I feel like they there's no good solution and i really want people to brainstorm to figure out how to make this more watchable right. if you're not a CrossFit athlete and there's got to be some creative solutions out there. I'm I'm not exactly sure. They're doing the best they can. Right. And I think they're doing an amazing job and I really enjoy what I did see. And all I can say is I hope the sponsors will continue because I know they really gave a lot of time to the sponsors this time, which hopefully they'll recoup the investment that they made in terms of sponsoring this with Advocare and mm -hmm. and a lot of Rich Fronings, the people who basically sponsor Rich Froning really sponsored a lot of the live stream. And, and I appreciate that. And, and I personally, as an athlete, will do business with the sponsors because I want masters to grow. Same here. But it's, but the market and the business side of it, I'm, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, yep. it's tough. That's, that's the unknown with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm sure if, I don't know if they'll ever open up about this or if they ever even want to talk about it, but when you run a competition like that, it does eventually has to Payback. I really you wish know? that they had done a little more background into each athlete. I know mm -hmm. there's so there's 300 athletes, but especially at the end, I mean, and maybe I'm biased, but I'm like, hey, Amy Edelman's in second. Why are they not talking about her right. more? Right. You should like, have heard my dad. <laughs> like they're, they're focusing my on a couple. Dad, my dad was not happy. You know? <laughs> right. Or Dave. Like I, I know that they want to focus on certain stories and, yeah. and play into interest for a, a, a particular storyline. Yeah. But I really did feel like they gave you guys short shrift. And, and I'm biased, so I can't really, I don't know if that's just me or yeah. what. But I was like, come on, like yeah. get to know every athlete a little bit and, and make some mention. Yeah. Right. But I get it because I feel like in my and I'm sure in your age group, too, there were a lot of games athletes yep. there that they knew already and they knew their name. That's an easy tagline. Yeah. Games, games, games. Right. You know, true. But yeah, I know it is tough. I don't really go down that path too much on it. It's like talk about who's in first in the event. I'm glad they got my name right. They did ask me. They said, can you use... Oh, she couldn't pronounce it. She pronounced it wrong every time. I know. Cyber... Woodland was better. <laughs> right. Yeah, a lot of people do cyber step, but they did ask Stop, me, like, hey, sin. can you text us like the phonetic of your name? Like, mm. how, how do I say your name? Because the guys on the DJs on the floor were not doing it, which is whatever. I mean, yeah. 
But I, you know, you, you see both angles, right? Like you said, it's a lot of people and you really don't know who's going to step up. But I think what they could do a better job of is what did they do this past year? Mm. And it doesn't take much at invest. Like, hey, Amy Edelman did not make semis this year. She made quarterfinals that came in blah, 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 plays, but now she's in second. Mm -hmm. Like, she must have really turned it up. Like, mm -hmm. that's a cool thing to say. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of research. Mm -hmm. you know, it takes five minutes. You know, instead of just saying, oh, you went to the games in 2014. Like, I had a couple of guys in my group that were actual individual athletes in the games years ago. And it's like, cool, but it doesn't really matter. It's like 2015. It's a lifetime ago, you know? Yeah. But it's an easy thing to find. Even yeah. their hometown or their home box, like, yeah, give them a shout out, like, where you're from. Cross it, Bison, yeah. Because yeah. we didn't have our shirts this year. This is one of the shirts. It doesn't say Bison on it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have our name. The name is, to me, actually, is whatever to me. But I like, it would have been cool if we, our Bison, or our name was on it. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're from Wyoming or Atlanta or right. whatever, like, yeah. that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the last workout. Last this, two. Yeah. Last two workouts, but it was one, it was one event. We did them back to back. All right. So this is Sunday. We have to wait till late in the afternoon. They kind of reseed everything and they have the top heats go last in the group, blah, blah, blah. First one was 1296 bar muscle up, front squat 185, 125. You get a four minute cap on that. A lot of people don't finish it. All right. And then you get a one minute rest and then you do reverse rep scheme, 6, 9, 12. Strict handstand push up, sandbag cleans, 150 for guys, 100 for the ladies. They did a lot of modifying for older groups on this. Basically, once the 50-year-olds got involved, they shortened the range of motion on the handstand push-ups. They let certain genders uh, kip, the female gender kip. Then they went to chest bar for older groups. They went to chin over bar for, for older groups and obviously reduced the weight. Stimulus was aggressive on the rig, if you could, and then a heavy squat. All right, take a break. Really difficult, strict gymnastics movement, and then a heavy clean. That no, I don't think anyone in the entire competition finished that second one, mm. which is okay. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But let's get into this first workout. So Amy going into this day, I think it was in second or third, right? Because in second. Second. In second, yep. yeah. right? And this first one, 12.96, bar muscle up front squat. What's the mindset going out there, Amy? I mean, I knew this wasn't going to be a good day. I didn't think it would be as it, as I, as it was. But like warming up, I felt I felt pretty good. I was like, all right, I can I'm going to do my best. You're more concerned about the muscle up, right, than the squat. Oh, yeah. Just so yes, people know. Yes. Right. Sorry. Yes. I'm definitely more concerned about the muscle up. I, I mean, I can do them. So it's just a matter of how many I was going to be able to do right. unbroken it's, and it's how long it was going to take between sets. And it's 27 reps. It's yeah. a lot in a short amount of time. So I was I was nervous. I was definitely nervous. But I remember coming up to you being like, you know what? I feel OK. Like, yeah. I think it might be OK. Yep. But and and I, you looked good. Uh, you looked good on your first set. How many did yeah. you do on that first set? Was it six think, or seven? No, uh, no, I don't think it was that many. Like four or five, I would I say. I think so. Okay. Yeah. And I just remember like, all right, she's got it. But now, and but it's a hard decision to make because the workout's so short. Yeah. You, know, you can't go into it saying, I'm going to really pace a four minute workout. Right. But you don't want to get to failure. Yeah. So what what's your cue for yourself when you do a workout like that? When do you be like, all right, I'm going to go for one more or I have to come down? I can usually tell on my way down. Well, on the rep, right? Yep. If the rep is a struggle, then obviously I'm getting off. Right. But on the way back down, I can usually tell if I'm going to be able to go back up. Got and it. then I have to jump back off, yeah. jump off. Okay. But I ended up failing way too many reps mm -hmm. uh, and going back. Although you had said, don't go back on too soon after you fail a rep because right. you need to give it a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. I, I did not listen to that. Advice, yeah, it's hard. It's so hard to do that in the moment. Because um, mm -hmm. then I can't, you panic a little bit. Yes. And you see everyone else moving. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, either I go now or I, I don't. Like, I'm going to just keep wasting time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So unfortunately, I just I just struggled. Mm -hmm. I struggled. How did the bar feel when you got there? To be honest, yeah. that was the first time I was in that lane. It was pretty slippery versus... The floor? What's that? The floor was or the bar? The bar. Okay. My my bar felt a little slippery, mm -hmm. and it was the first time I was there, and I thought I was in that lane for mm -hmm. toes to bar, but then I looked you back, were, and yeah. I was actually in the other lane. Right. So that, for yeah. someone who is, struggles already with that movement, like, adding yeah. just a little bit of a change makes mm -hmm. it just even yep. harder yep. for me. And then the, and then, uh, the squats, how did, the, how did those feel Like once you got there? They were heavy, but I, I felt like I could move through them. I didn't go super fast mm -hmm. on them, but it, it felt it felt pretty heavy. Yeah. But yeah. So so you get through 
a decent chunk of that workout. Yep. And there's a four minute cat. There's a one minute rest, so mm-hmm. not much. Yep. Right. You go back, and now we have six, nine, twelve. Only three minute cat. No one's finishing this. Strict handstand pushups and the sandbag clean. And if there's probably one thing that you were most worried about, uh, it's the strict handstands. Was the strict handstand pushups? I don't think I was workout. even able to do them up until a couple three weeks. weeks before the competition. Yeah. Oh like wow. I, I could not get a single rep. Oh in wow. Every time here. we program them in her programming, it was always with an ab mat, an ab a, mat. a riser, if you want to call it a riser. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I think the our last Sunday training day, like, hey, Amy. Look, Try a couple. Yeah. And you were able to do a couple. And I and I got some in. So I was like, all right, at least maybe I'll be able to get some in. I was like, it depends where it's going to fall. Right. On the days. Yeah. So I was definitely concerned because it was the last day. Right. Mm-hmm. That I was going to be just really fatigued. But I ended up doing them. And yeah. I was kind of proud of myself just that's for awesome. doing it. Great win. Yeah. yeah. That's a great deal. And it just gives you like a good foundation to build yeah. off of in the, in, the, in the future, in your next year of training. Yeah. So I want to ask you a question about this because I haven't asked you this. It's going to be a... Would you have emotionally, right? Would you have rather, if you got to pick and you could just kind of finagle things yourself, would you have rather done this first and had to play catch up most of the weekend? Or did you like that it was last so that you, you know, you kind of had the full weekend of like, yo, I'm at the top here. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I think initially going into the competition, I wanted this to be first, like okay. this, anything that had the handstand pushups or the bar muscle ups first. But now ha- seeing all this play out and me kind of being in first or second the whole weekend, I kind of liked it. Yeah. It, it, it pushed me instead of trying to just climb my way back and yeah. like worrying about every workout. I mean, I worried about every yeah, workout yeah, yeah. just in a different way, but it put, a different type of pressure, I think, on me to keep that spot. Mm. And I had told Dave at some point, I was like, you know what? I came into this only wanting to be in the afternoon session, which was top 16. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm in second, like I taste it and I don't want to lose it. Yeah, so yeah. that put on, yep. I think, more good pressure. Yes. Not a negative pressure. Right. A positive pressure. Good. Of good. This is where I want to stay. Good. That's a yeah. great response. Sam, thoughts yeah. on this back to back workout? Right. So Amy was coming in too. And I think that this is a mark of how good you are. So when we watch athletes, you know, you'll, you know, and I, I'm not going to compare it to Aaron Judge, but if you watch an Aaron Judge and you're like, he strikes out and you're like, oh, what a bum. That guy just struck out. <laughs> and you're like, you don't know what it takes to get to that level. Right. You're just expecting excellence awesome. the whole way through. Right. So when I have talked to people and they're like, Amy was second, how did she, and it sounds brutal, but that's yeah. how high level athletes are expected to perform. Like yeah. that, it's a compliment in that sense that yeah. when you watch a Laura Horvath and you say, oh, her hole is handstand push. I'm like, yeah. how does someone that good not yeah. a- address that deficiency? Right. How, right. how does Aaron Judge strike out as many times as he does when he's supposed to be as good as he is? You know, or whatever. Or like like and, Haley Adams with her strength. Or strength. Like, how yeah. does someone that good not lift heavy? And right. isn't she practicing that? Like, why is <laughs> she not doing that all the time? Yeah, all the right. time. Right. Yeah. And so, I am. so, <laughs> so when I, when I hear people say that, one, they're, it's, I understand they're coming from a good place because they expect, yeah. like, oh, wow, she's crushing it. She's second. And then, you know, when they say that, you know, there's a whole, they don't understand it. It's it's truly a compliment on yeah, one level. Absolutely. And second, it also comes from n- not necessarily understanding, you know, how much has been put in terms of what you've put into it. And third, I I understand it because we all have probably been there on different levels, maybe not on such an elite level, but it just makes me really proud to see that. It also hurts though. You know, when you're watching somebody yeah. that you care about, yeah. And you're like, there's a second. And then yeah. you know that they're killing themselves and they're just not there with it. There's a lot of pain with that too. So as an as a spectator and as someone as a supporter, it hurts. I mean, it hurt to watch you. It hurt to watch Dave yeah. that last day, you know. Um, but it also made me really proud to sort of see that, you know, you guys really gave it literally everything that you have. Yeah, yeah. right. So. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a humility factor to this that every athlete is going to go through if you're going to compete, try to compete, try to get to your highest level, whatever that is. There's going to be humbling moments, and that's a humbling moment, right? And mm-hmm. you can go one of two directions, right? You can say, like, screw this. Like, I don't want to work on it anymore, which honestly is fine. That might be like, you know what? This is 
the sport's not for you because, or it kind of throws some fuel on the fire that, you know, I don't think Amy's going to, even if she works on it all year, she's not going to one day wake up and do like 35 strict handstand pushups in a row. Right. But, but that, that kind of reaction, that kind of situation can be like the fuel for the fire, you know, and it, it, it does sometimes losing actually brings out the best in you. And you finished sixth. I know. And well, actually, both of you finished sick. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bring up the points. Well, how so... many points did I get and how many points She outscored did... me by two points. 604 versus 606. Oh, my God. That's right. I can't believe that. That's right. So maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just say like, I would have come in first if Amy came in first. So she, she, she needs to be better. Really? I don't know. So, so when I, so I would like to hear you, Dave, because, you know, even the, even the announcers were making mention of you and it was, it was really, it was tough to see. Yeah. No, I believe it. I, yeah. I know it's like that. I feel bad for Ash. You know, it's like, it's probably harder to watch than to do. To so, to do. so tell me, like, how did it go when you were out there? You you knew. You yeah. Knew. Well, I mean, you could see, I mean, right away, I couldn't run. Right. So like, you're on the end of the mat. You, every, it's a sprint. So yep. like everyone runs to the rig. Yes. Like, I was, I was really excited for this workout when it came out. Okay. I was really excited. Okay. Like, I, like that's like, this is like my jam. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So. Everyone's excited. I'm still in third. I You're think, in at third the start, place, but yep. like you know, it's not going to happen because I literally only for the sake, like, for the sake that I can't run down there. Yeah. So I limp my way down there, and we're all watching. And like, is Dave has some secret strategy <laughs> that we're not aware of? Is he pacing? <laughs> like, is he really smart? And like, everyone's so dumb running, and what he's does like, he know that we don't. <laughs> so, but I even like, you know, I'm not telling anyone about this. Like, all my yeah. fellow competitors, you know, like they're like nicest guys too, like checking in on me. I was in the medical tent for the last day and a half, yeah. right? Yeah, I wasn't yeah. even warming up with them. Yeah. But they like they kind of know. Like, you don't talk about it, but they know. Like, all right, he's not even going to be a factor in this workout. Mm -hmm. But my judges don't. So I go out there, say hi, and like everyone runs and I'm walking, mm -hmm. limping. And the judge at the, Reagan was like so confused. He's like, what is happening? What are you doing? Right. Muscle ups were not impacted. So right. I went up there, did my muscle ups. Yeah. And then the front squat, you no, know, I practiced the front squat leading up to, I had like my thick knee sleeve on. It hurt, but it actually was hurting less to squat than it was to walk. Mm. Walking was more painful. Like once I set that knee into place, I could squat, but I couldn't bend it to, to a certain point. So like I would get halfway to my squat and literally just go all onto my right. And like that, that's, you know, and then once I got to a certain range of motion with the left knee, then it was like, all right, that hurt. Like I grimaced a few times. Yeah. You could see it on your face. I went down a little too fast. Yeah. And like, you felt like almost like something was like cracking in right. there. So. And um, Annie Sakamoto was like, oh, there's something not right about him. And like, you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's about to get lapped. Yes. You know? So. You know, but I, again, this is where I, I really, in my heart, just wanted to say I finished. Like, even if I had to go out there and I didn't know if I was going to squat, mm -hmm. like I had a feeling I was going to like, I'm just going to stand at the barbell, but I didn't want to walk away from it. I actually had a good conversation with one of my fellow competitors who was in the military. And he said, he goes, you know, like a lot of people in this situation, because you know, you're not going to do your best. Like they would just kind of like, I'm out. Yeah. And we had a couple of people drop out. Yeah. I don't know what their reasons were, if they were credible or not. I'm not looking at down on them if they did, mm -hmm. but I Wanted to walk away from the comp saying I did all the events, even though I knew I would come in 20th place or something like that, right? 24th. Whatever. And thanks. Sorry. <laughs> and 18th on the second. Yeah. Okay. So I did Pretty the squats. Pretty impressive though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did the, I think I did the, the 12, 12 and 9, 9 and then I got one muscle, I think. Yeah. I'm pre yeah. I did two mm -hmm. sets of squats. Mm -hmm. but the hardest part was the clean. Like I couldn't, like, like that fast twitch knee movement of like catching it. Mm -hmm. It was, that was the hardest part. And but once I got it locked in, I was like, all right, I can at least get there slowly. And I think there's also a mental block and like, hey, you know, you're getting your butt kicked. Like, could I have tried to go faster? Sure. But I just don't think it would have made a difference. Mm. So, you know, you do that, you get your minute break, limp back. They all run out for the strict hand sand pushups. I'm limping again. By that time, my judges know something's up. Mm -hmm. And I felt good on that, actually. Like, my handstands felt great. Mm -hmm. The sand, But I was probably less fatigued than some of these guys, too. Mm -hmm. It's probably one positive there. Mm -hmm. But the sandbag, like once I got there, I couldn't use my left leg. Mm -hmm. Like, like I was like, I don't even know if I can do this. And I had to basically do it on one leg. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sucked. It, it, but I'm glad I got to finish. I was actually really happy right after that moment. I'm like, no DQ. Made it through. Yeah, no DQ. Mm -hmm. Like did, yeah. did all the workouts. So I got in this question a few times. It's an interesting question. If one of your athletes was in that state, mm. would you have told them to do that? 
you know, like if Amy was limping the way I was limping. I don't think so. I would have told them to withdraw because yeah. what's the point? You could hurt yourself more. Yeah. So I have my answer condition now. Okay. I'm just gonna, it's your decision. Yeah. Yep. I'm, like I'm saying, this is your comp. This is your memory. This is your, your personal legacy. This is what you're going to remember. What are you going to be proud of now? Is it possible I could have jacked this thing up more yes. and prolong my recovery? Yes. yes. So from that regard, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And that's where, but a coach can say that. Like, hey, it's probably, from that regard, it's not worth it, but it's still your decision. Like if Brock ever gets hurt, maybe not when he's you know, out of high school, like he's an adult, like say he's, he's going to be, he's going to be playing on the Yankees in 20 years anyway. So, <laughs> but if he gets hurt, he's going to, I am going to be that way. I'm like, hey, here's my thought as your father. This is what I think is going to happen if you get hurt more, blah, 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 but I'm not going to pull you off. If he's a kid, I will. Mm -hmm. You know, I think your athlete might worry that you would think less of them right. by making that choice that's, to withdraw. That's all part of the communication with it. And I mean, I, I, especially I, you're, you know, listen, everyone, you say sometimes like you, you think everyone thinks you kind of bully them or you push too hard. Right. And there are some athletes that you coach that might think, well, if I withdraw, Dave will think less of me because I didn't right. keep going. Well, so like, let's say this happens again to Amy next year or to you or like to everyone, anyone that goes down and competes. And like, let's say they get hurt and like in their head, they're saying, I, I will tell you this right now. I will never be disappointed if someone backs up because it's their body and it's their decisions. And like, I might be paying for this more than I think, right? Mm. Like I might be paying for this, like we're to the point where it's not worth it. Right. But it, it, I don't view myself as tough or. Like I fought through this. It was like, I'm stubborn. And sometimes being stubborn is a bad trait. And maybe this was a bad decision, but right now that's what I wanted to do. And I'm, a, I'm at peace with that. But if someone else wanted to back out because they were injured, I swear to God, I would not judge it because it is, but I would make sure it's your decision. Like Dave L came up to me. He's like, I hope you're not doing this because you think we want you to do it. Right. I was like, I don't. I, I was like very honest. I was like, dude, I'm here yeah. to compete for myself. Like I, I, that, that was where my mind was at. Yeah, I think of it as a physician and I'm like, listen, what are you fighting for other than a moral victory for yourself? Which is fine. Right. But physically, right. if you jacked your knee up mm -hmm. doing that, picking up that 185 pound bar to try to do that front squat yeah. and literally tore something permanently in yeah. there. Right. Where is that moral victory going to be for you? I agree. And They're, as a physician, I would have said, no, yeah. Nick's, I'm taking that decision out of your hands. Right. I, I want you to keep, if you want to keep competing, yeah. let's, let's stop. Yeah. Like some personal stuff. My, my wife, and I, Ashley and I were talking in the hotel that night before. And she's like, Dave, like, she's like, honestly, like if it's your knee, it's your call. She goes, but if you start getting like the, the dizzy spells again, you actually feel like something's wrong with the health. Like they started talking about yeah. my heart a little bit. Like. Yeah. He's like, he's just like, I need you to promise me you'll stop. And I said, I will. Like if that side, if that like shut down body starts to happen again, I would stop. I see. But, but I think, it, think I think you'd have to know your athlete, right? Because you know, like, you know, Dave's going to go out there and do whatever he wants yeah. to do and fight through it. Yeah. So I would actually be a little bit more concerned with someone like him mm. versus someone who would be like, this really hurts. I'm done. Yeah, like, you know right, what I mean? Right. Just like you, I think you need to know where that person is mentally when it comes to pushing themselves. Yeah. Right. Because some athletes will just back away at anything, right. which is fine. Yep. But there's other athletes who will be like, I don't, it's fine. I'm right. going to go through it, yeah. go through with it anyway. Right. So I think that's the hard. Yeah. Hard like if I had a glass too. ball that said, you're going to really hurt your knee bad. If you keep going, I would stop, you know, oh, of course, but like, but nobody has that. Yeah. There, there's risk. I think there's risk involved in competing. I, I do. I really like there, there's risk in, in not it really pushing yourself. And I'm hoping at some point, like I've, I've had a lot of people like reach out and say this, and I believe it too. Like there's going to be good that comes from it. It just mm -hmm. might not be when you want it or how you want it. But of course, so I do have that mindset. Like, all right, I did push through this. I am. No, I don't think I made it worse. And I'm looking back on it. Glad I did it. Like, yeah. I think the thing I'm most proud about from the comp was doing well on the wall ball fan. Mm -hmm. I came in third on that mm. with, you know, with, you know, and I, I just like, I don't think I would have benefited. I would have, I almost dropped out before that event. I almost dropped yeah. out five different times, you know? So that, that's the last thought on that. So the, the, the way to wrap this up, this is long. This might end up being two episodes. It's going to be two episodes. <laughs> but the, I, I, I'm curious, and I want Amy to put this out there. 
I have not met with her yet, like as her coach, but, but I want to, so like, where do you go from here? Because is there, have you hit that, like that lull yet? Like that post comp dopamine crash? Yeah, I think so. I think actually this, this week just coming back where I'm like, just still beat up, tired, don't feel a hundred percent, don't feel like myself. So mm -hmm. I think I'm hitting that now. Yep. And now you have the holidays coming. Right. And then the holidays and everything, but I know. I'm going to get past that. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know exactly what I'm going to want to do. Okay. So. <laughs> do you want to put that out there publicly or not? Yeah. I mean, I want to go back and yeah. I want to do, yeah. Good. I want them to say my name yeah. on the announcing yeah. and yeah. my background yeah. and things like that. Yeah. I want that. I like that. Why not? Yeah. I like that. And I respect <laughs> that you put it out there because, you know, there's yeah. no guarantees. No. That, that, that no. You get there. Oh, no. I think you know I've that. already thought about that. Yep. I've already thought, man, I'm going to have to do this all over yep. again. And it, but it takes someone brave. Like, I'm, yeah. I didn't ask her to say that, by the way, just so you guys know, because it's, it's hard to do publicly. It just is. We've talked about this. It's hard to say your shit on, on like for other people yeah. to hear. But I, I, I give her a lot of credit for being brave about that. How uh, about you? Yeah. Probably not going to do the quarterfinals, semifinals this year in the spring because and, of your knee. Yeah. And, uh, but same thing, like had a long talk with, with Ashley about this last night. Like I, I, I'm more upset about not winning than I am about my knee. And I don't like that taste, you know, I'll be thinking about it for a long time. And I want to, I want to go back there next year too, whether, I don't know where it's going to be, whether it's at Mayhem or somewhere else, but so I'll just say at Legends next year. And, you know, as the third, so I guess I'll be 37 37, 38 year old, whatever, I want to win it next year. Yeah. I thought this was going to be your last year. You said that before. If I, <laughs> if I won. Oh, uh, that would, there was a conditional to that. Yeah. I thought it was a win, loser. There draw. is now. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's a hard thing to walk away from. And I've always said, if I'm capable of doing it, I'm going to go for it. Cause you tasted yeah. it. You were I right think, there. Yeah. yeah. I had it right where I wanted to after yeah. two days. And I do think this is going to get harder to qualify for. Yeah, every every time there's a big broadcast like this, people want to do it. Yep. Whole new crop of 35 year olds. I think almost every competitor this year was 35. Rich Froning might be competing. Yeah. Let's go, Rich. <laughs> Bring it. But the I, I think that's where we're in the same mindset there. It's but I'm actually more carefree about it because I don't have something to go for in the next four months. Hmm. And I kind of just want to make that the legends my thing. And I think that will be the one difference this year is I'm not going to pursue those two things. Just pursue one of them take some pressure off the urgency to, to get the knee right mm -hmm. and then go from there. Yeah. Sam, what about you? What about me? What I, about you? I, I, listen, watching you guys suffer and go through this, that's a special kind of mindset there. And you guys were all in for months and months and months. I saw you guys train. I saw you guys did it. You can't half-ass this. Right. It's, it's tempting because I saw how they scaled it for the 50s. Yep. I'm not going to say no when I hit 55. And that's because their, their age thing is different. How old are you right now? I'm 52. And then you turn 53 when? Next year in September. In September. No, no, I'll be 54. I'm 53. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, so you're going to be 54. So yeah, you're, you're two years away from that so age. So the following group. year. Yeah. Yeah, because their age thing is different than the games. So yeah. when I have to do 25 pound dumbbells yeah. and 20 inch. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, chest to bar it. instead of bar muscle ups, yeah. uh, you know, then maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I might, uh, I might give it a shot, but okay. watching these, but I mean, I will say watching all of the athletes, even the 50 plus they're I right. think amazing yeah. athletes. Animals. I mean, there's yeah. no doubt that if I were to get to that part of the comp, it's a like, they're going to, they're going to be crushing it. Yeah. It's going to be just as hard as it was for you guys yeah. at, because everyone is aging up and is, is just getting stronger and stronger. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's a moving target. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up our two-part Legends recap. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if there's anything you guys want to reach out to us about in regard to this, something that we want, want us to talk about or something that you want to comment on, we'll definitely put it out there. We can add it into another another episode down the road. Congratulations to you two one more time. Yep. Amazing. Thank so you. proud of you guys. Thanks. Everyone at Bison and everyone who knows you knows just what excellence you guys represent. Thank yep. you. And All thank you to to everyone at Bison and yeah, to support. I mean, that was amazing. Yeah, like, that that really you know? that helps you yeah. stay away from like this extreme peaks and valleys of the weekend. Is yeah. when you have like that home home base, touching in, reaching out, helping yeah. out. Who so, so was there? Sean O'Hare, also da David Lancelotti, Brittany, mm -hmm. Brittany, Ashley, Ash, um, Rolf, yeah, Rolf, Tracy's husband, Mike. 
Mike. Oh, oh yeah, and shout out to Mike. You know, we barely talked about Tracy. We didn't talk about We're her. We're gonna get Tracy so, on. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. We're getting Tracy on. I have a few ideas for her, and then we'll uh, we'll talk some Legends talk. But I think she's got a really cool backstory that a lot of people don't know about with the games competing yeah. and owning a gym and all that stuff. And so Tracy, Tracy will definitely be on. But yeah, Tracy was down there. Mike was down there, and uh, yeah, it was and just a lot of support from back home. Mm-hmm. Always helps. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit Podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.